Okay, so welcome back to episode two of Tippy Talks. Okay, so I'm just kind of really sweaty right now. I just came back from a walk. It's been a lovely rest day. So many of you know that I celebrate Shabbat, um, or I remember such Shabbat. Um, it's a day that I study, I reconnect with a creator. I just do pretty much nothing except learn, study, and reconnect. And it's a way for me to rebalance my temple, okay? So more on that another time if anybody's interested. But I just came back from a walk over from the property and I have, um, I took my little kitten. I have a new little kitten, her name is Lily. And for whatever reason, I, w I felt like I was supposed to go get her, okay? And I will, maybe I'll tell the story about that another time. But today, I thought um, I would answer one of the questions um, that was left in the comment and that was um, to go more into depth about how our words and thoughts create our reality okay so I'm not gonna get too scientific and that's because it's literally scientifically proven that our words and thoughts create our reality why because we live in a magnetic electrical field okay now what is that electrical magnetic field? <laughs> Did I say that correctly? Yeah, electrical magnetic field. <laughs> um, well, that is the being, the creator, the one of all coherence, order, okay? It is the, the force that creates and keeps everything going and the one that, um, some of you might say call God or some of you may um, identify differently but for my experience it is the creator what I call Yah okay and Yah little means the being that exists and why do I talk with my hands Woo, okay <laughs> all right so literally so we we, are, we live in an electrical magnetic field so if we examine what magnets are magnets attract or repel right and what is an electricity electricity is a current a current kind of moves through the magnets and creates a force okay so what is our mind our minds are waves they're literally waves and those waves are currents Okay. What is our heart? Our heart is the generator of electricity, but I also do believe it's part, it's a magnetic field, a, a magnetic force as well. Um, most people think it's a pump and I don't think of it as a pump. I think of it as a generator of something, generator of magnets, of the magnetic force or generator of the electrical field that's inside us. Okay, so that's kind of like the basic 101 of how this works. One thing to remember is that many of our thoughts are being played in the background <laughs> that were programmed in our minds from the very beginning, like from when you were in utero all the way to age eight, okay? That's what's called the subconscious mind. A lot of these little thoughts or programs are literally playing in the background and we don't realize that they're there. A lot of these um, experiences have become habits and those habits have become characters in us so it character is who we identify as okay but we're really not our characters we're really not those thoughts we are not our experiences so that's another little tidbit that might help in this in this whole thing um, when we become aware that we are not our thoughts or those programs running in the background, we can actually come into the present, into the now, and create from a blank slate. And we can delete some of those programs, right? And it may, may be some, something as simple as when you were little, you were told no a lot. So when you grow up, those little no programs are running in your brain, okay? And you become the character of a no person. So have you, have you ever experienced a no person and a yes person? Somebody that's like, yes, I don't, I don't know how it happens, but yes, I am a yes person. Things happen, and I know, I don't know the hows or the intricate details of it, but yes. 
And then you have you noticed other people that are no, no, that can't work. And they start thinking with their analytical minds and they start analyzing and they start putting puzzles together. And they're very sensory, like visual, you know, or they're like, how can that work? They're living in a field that is <laughs> that's literally stuck in that in those programs. Okay, no, that can't work. No, you can't do that. So there's two distinct types of people in the world. Um, and I mean, there's other people, but I'm just using those very distinct ones just to get the, my point across. And so, okay, um, where was I going with this? I was going with this as far as um, knowing that our, we're not our character. We're not, we can actually take responsibility and we can come into the now and say, nope, I am not those thoughts. I am not a no person. I am not even a yes person. I am whoever I decide to be right now. And what what do I want to be? What do I want to create? What um, what do I want to accomplish? Okay. So that is the premise of, you know, a little background of kind of how that works. Okay. So let's go back. Let's go in deeper. Okay. Where now that we know where those some of the thoughts are coming out from from childhood and they're playing in the background, are they translate? They can translate through our words. So before you say something, you have thought it. Okay, you have thought it. You know, minutes before, seconds before, milliseconds before. So when you say something, that is a frequency. That is a vibration. Okay? And remember, it's anything that goes out into the magnetic electrical field, okay? What you put out, there is a law that says you reap what you sow. So when you put something out there that is say, and I'm going to use the yes person, she puts out a yes um, frequency, she will receive a yes product, something that is maybe perhaps in order. When somebody puts out a no output, <laughs> there's a mosquito, when they put a, a no output, they will receive a negative feedback, okay? So everything is always in coherence with the natural laws that were put into our, into our, cre into our earth, into our atmosphere through the creator, okay? So have you ever heard the phrase, um, um, out of the heart comes comes evil, okay? Or out of the heart comes what we say sin or evil thoughts, okay? The heart carries a lot of passion. And we talked about it's an, a magnetic, it's an electrical, it's, you know. Um, so when you put something out, you're not only just saying it, but it's carrying the weight of an emotion. Where do you feel those emotions? It's carried in the heart. When somebody passes away, where do you feel the most? In the heart. When you fall in love, you feel in the heart. When you're angry, literally, not it's, it starts in the heart and it goes up to the brain. Okay, and this is, um, <laughs> but it all starts in the heart. It's a generator of emotion, a generator of electricity. What are emotions? They are, they are a manifestations of thoughts. You're reacting to those thoughts. So, when you're speaking. Um, and you have become aware that you're not your thoughts, but you become aware that you can control, you know, um, the, uh, the output, what's going out so that you receive something that you are desiring versus something that like, wait, that went wrong. What happened? Wait, ex let's examine what happened. So when you put something out there and with a, I'm going to use the word yes, as a positive, something, a you know, something that you really want or really desire, and you put an, an emotion, a heartfelt emotion with that word, you have created a frequency that has gone out. The natural law says it has to come back, okay? So what you put out comes back. Now, let's go even deeper. Have you ever been around a person that, you know, that literally is not vibrating? And I use the word vibrating, literally. What is sound? Vibration. Okay, if I clap my hands, I'm creating a vibration, okay? Words are vibrations. So another person, okay, could be having a lot of negative vibrations going on in their heads. And if you listen closely, you know, if you listen closely to how they speak, you can actually predict before they say something what they're thinking. 
<laughs> right? Because remember in the beginning I said, you know, that's how our experiences as, ch as children because and I didn't explain that very well. I'm going to go back to that why that happens. It has to do with your um brave brave wa um waves. The the wavelength of the brain. Okay. Pause on that. Okay. So, when you're around this person, you can actually predict, you know, what they're going to say um based on the type of character that they are, okay? Um but if you become aware in the now, you can literally um disassociate yourself from the the words that they're saying right and the thoughts that they're having if you understand that that individual may not be aware of that i'm what uh, uh, rookie says she needs to borrow liquid aminos uh we borrow some yeah you can go get some sorry i don't want to take some um we we just got interrupted in my in my little video it's okay you can borrow some liquid aminos um anyway somebody wanted to borrow um liquid aminos yeah see positive but no soy sauce in my household liquid aminos or coconut aminos if you guys don't know what that is look it up all right so where was i so you can literally look at an individual and instead of emotionally being reactive to the individual um if you can dis dis disassociate yourself, as well, their words from their thoughts and knowing like, okay, that, that's not who they are because now you're aware, you're in the presence, like that's not who they really are because they are more, they're more than their thoughts. They're more than their emotions, okay? They're just reacting to a thought and they're not there yet. And this is where compassion and mercy comes in. So when you can step into that, into that new growth into in your journey where you're like, okay, let me listen to this. Let me it's valid what they're trying to say their feelings are legit but if you can step into that role of um okay they're that's not who they are you know and i'm gonna give them a space right here by being present so that they can feel safe to express however and perhaps my perception of them can actually start changing them because what are we magnetic electrical beings what does a magnet do it repels or attracts what is current what is the current electrical field does it moves things okay it carries things so what if we our perception of a person no matter who they are no matter what state they're in mentally or emotionally our perception of then of them a positive perception of them of who they really really are as far as being an electrical magnetic um, being that are perfectly wonderfully made can change their alter or uh, change or alter their 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 um their being okay so that's really cool i i do practice that a lot uh, when i'm trying to showcase mercy or grace understanding an individual and this that actually becomes very important in my practice when i'm when i'm um evaluating and uh, a new client it, i do practice that that way i'm not um i'm not becoming attached to the emotion of the past and growing all that chaos instead i am stepping back i'm becoming neutral i'm listening so that my input does not affect them negatively okay um what else can i say about this okay so our thoughts okay become words by the time they become worse, you already created a feeling. There's a feeling that's projected in that um, in that generator um, of electricity, the heart. Okay, it's already gone out there. The field then is going to give you more of what you desire. That's another um, point that I want to make. Um, the creator always wants to give you more of what you desire that's why you gotta check your heart check those emotions what are you putting out there it can't the creator can't contradict itself okay if you desire more negative stuff guess what it, there's no respecter of person here it's gonna come back to you now you you can't get a change of hearts right it's possible you can change your mind you can change your words you can change your emotions but we gotta shift what we focus on. We gotta become aware of who we are in the um, in our existence. Who are we? 
you know, we are, and I do believe this with my whole heart, we are the light of the world. Okay, so simple. What is light? Light is electricity. It shines on everything. Um, we are the salt. We, we are the flavor. Okay, <laughs> so hopefully that kind of give you, gives you a sense of how our thoughts and our words create our reality. Now, I want to go back to the eight, zero to eight years old um, phase. So in that phase, a lot of children are in what's called theta wavelength, their brain wavelength. It's a very, very slow um, wavelength, okay? It's a slow frequency, but they're in that creative mode. They're creating, they're a blank slate, okay? Everything they're doing, they're creating, they're imagining, their input, everything is coming in. Nothing is coming out necessarily yet, okay? So all the experiences that they're having is literally being recorded in their brain, okay? <laughs> um, those memories, they don't go away. They stay there. You know, we might get glimpses of seconds here, 30 seconds there, but they become the programs that then turns us into the adults in the future this is why it's so important if you have little ones that you speak um you speak health and life and goodness and um words of um, affirmations to these children okay and i know that it's hard because children are very testing they are so, they push the limit you know they don't they don't have that frontal lobe is has not been fully developed it doesn't develop till you're 30 years old so it's completely there's no judgment. There's no, um, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't say that. Oop. You know, that's that's our judgment right here. It is not developed till you're at least age 30, fully developed. Um, so children, they don't have filters. <laughs> and they just push and push and push, you know. And they, you know, this is where we as adults, if we come into that moment of now and in the present, it's like, okay. I am not the frustration that I'm feeling. I am not those thoughts that are making me want to speak something that was going to make me react. If you take a pause before you speak and check in with your heart and remember these children are being programmed for the adults that they're going to become and the adult then has that potential of literally creating the the journey that they want to live and come into their purpose in alignment with the creator <laughs> okay now we have a healthy what i say in shalom adult okay but unfortunately there's a lot of um children that are growing up in very chaotic uncoherent um, homes that are um, putting a lot of stress on their little minds, the little bodies, creating health issues, and then later on that kicks carry on to adults. But good news, it can be changed, okay? As the moment you become aware of who you really are, the light of the world, the salt of the earth, those thoughts can be reprogrammed. And how do I do that? I do that through prayer, meditation, affirmations, and focusing on those things that are good, lovely, beautiful, um, in order, um, that are wondrous. This is why my, co my company, it's, I guess this is a company. <laughs> it's called Nomadic Wonders because everywhere I go, I want to be focused on the wonders of this world and the moment you get attached to something right you get planted you have arrived that's the moment that you start living your life from that point okay whether it be positive or negative and then there's but there's no growth somebody that is in constant movement you can be rooted in the creator you can be rooted in who you are and still move more, move around okay um and we can become the the beings that we were meant to be and offer creation what we're supposed to offer and each other offer each other offer creation um and bring shalom and harmony to this earth so in the theta wavelength when you reach you can reach that through meditation you can reach that through prayers it's the moment right before you fall asleep and it's the moment right when you wake up so a good way to rewrite those programs is when you right when you wake up you're still in theta mode don't pick up your phone don't reach for the bathroom pause 
say your affirmations, what you want to focus on, the thought creates an emotion, the emotion creates a word, and you speak it, okay? And then you have set the tone for your day. And then you let go. Now, that one thing that I see happen a lot is that people get into meditation, affirmations, and things like that. But what they do, they try to manipulate the situation with their physical um, self. So they try to affect the spiritual aspect of manifestation or creation with matter. And the matter is physical. <laughs> so we want the physical and the matter to reflect the spiritual. The spiritual reflects the, the physical, the matter parts, okay? So obviously, when you see somebody that is um, out of sorts and not in order, oh, there's the, the voice of the creator. I, the thunder, I love the thunder and lightning. Um, but I'm gonna wrap this up because it's gonna start raining. But I wanted to get this video out there because if I don't do it, if I wait for the perfect moment, it's never gonna get done because I know me, I am flowing. I go like this and in the midst of my flow, I'm like, oh, I should stop and do a video. But that actually takes me from my now and I literally strive to live in my now. Not in the future, not in my past. The past has, it, it's like it didn't happen. But my future is waiting to be created and it's created from the now, okay? Everything that you do, every little step, every thought, every word. And um, so where was I going? Yeah, real quick. So you can recreate, that's the good news. You can change those, um, those thoughts, those programs. It's like a computer up there, okay? There's different departments of the minds that um, I go even deeper in my level three um, course. But that's it, that just how it happens. Um, I mean, it's, it's a whole rabbit hole. It's a whole rabbit hole. <laughs> okay, but it's, it goes deeper, like literally scientifically how your brain works and how it produces different hormones and the hormones then produce a state of being. Oxytocin gets uh, made and oxytocin is a hormone that is a feel good bonding, um, just you feel alive. You know, it's, it's the hormone that, um, that tells your body to produce milk so that you can nurse and then it's a bonding between you and your significant other or your baby or your pets. Oxytocin happens between friends. So it's very important to strive for that oxytocin and that's in the hypothalamus. Now I'm not gonna get into all that, but literally when we, we understand that we are not our thoughts and that we can, you know, we can focus on new thoughts focus on new experiences, tap into the, the heart and bring heart and mind, um, I wanna say coherence in that place, heart and mind coherence with the words and you speak it, the world of possibilities <laughs> have come to you. I totally just said that in like in a total weird accent Okay, whatever. You're gonna learn that I have like many accents. I don't have just one, I have like a few, okay? They kind of come in and out, but that's cool, that's me. Um, and with that, I'm gonna say thank you for watching, um, coming back and listening to my TP talks and story times, and I'm gonna get more into stories. I know I didn't really um, tell you a story in this, in this episode, but <laughs> And I think I know why. I think it's because I'm hesitant to share my stories. I don't know why. I try to, I don't know, maybe I'll work on that, telling more of my stories. Um, but it's kind of difficult for me to tell my stories. Like, I don't know, maybe because I think my stories are my own, but I need them to be shared, right? Uh, yeah. So with that, I'm going to say shalom, and I hope you had a lovely um, Shabbat, if you celebrate Shabbat, and or a lovely um Saturday if that's what you do and whatever you did was perfect. All right. Bye.